leaves you with two choices. You can either own a house closer to work, or you can own the road in between. At a stoplight. It will last 20 seconds. This may be the only time some people ever see you. How do you want to be remembered? To achieve a feeling that no other car has. Yeah, I'm not heating. Try not to think of exactly what the car would look like literally, but more just how it would feel like emotionally when you saw it. I was struck by its strong human appeal, by its warmth. It was very powerful and very clean and very pure. It creates a desire to touch, to drive. Uh, one thing that was so surprising for me was the animated, come to life, almost animalistic feeling that the car has and it does move. I think it's really going to... Uh, uh, simulate the, the rest of the designers in the world, they're going to wonder how did we achieve these shapes. We have given birth to an original style, unlike anything that has come before in the world. for the next wave or the next direction in, in automotive styling. Our gut reaction at that time told us that to count the industrial look, we wanted to go more to the emotional side, design with more feeling, something with more life to it. We work with pure cluster shapes, which we found to be very beautiful, very pure, and very simple. What we needed to do was translate these shapes into a more automotive feel, which again is more linear, more stretched, that type of thing. What we did was we took photographs of these kind of amorphic organic images and we transposed them to a slide we shot the slides onto a projector and stretched that image and i realized this is it this is the lexus coupe and that was it i, I called dennis in and i said you got to see this the total design was developed in 3d as opposed to two-dimensional uh, techniques that are normally used in uh, car design and development it was a hands-on experience for the designers it was a very tactile approach to designing shape I think the sense of touch was always involved in the car design. He had pulled a fender line through the car, a single motion, but it an undulating motion that was very beautiful and very powerful. And, and he, he said, I think this is it, Dennis. He said, I think this is the essence of this, this design. So by not using traditional two-dimensional design techniques, we were able to maintain that continuity of feeling, the, the emotional expression from the original sketch all the way to the final uh, model that we released at Toyota. When we finally did take that proposal to Japan, it was kind of a nervous situation for us because Mr. Okada, chief engineer, had come six months earlier and seen that model and not liked it at all. And when he pulled the cover off of it, his eyes lit up and he had this big smile on his face. He said, this car is very beautiful. 
I was very surprised. No style. This design had a sense of style that was not modern and contemporary, but felt nostalgic, elegant, and classic as well. My first impression of the coupe was that it was very refined, and that if developed the right way, it would be an outstanding vehicle. The Kelty prototype gave me a strong sense of the designer's unique taste. And I was afraid that if someone else continued to develop the design, the car would lose that feeling. I didn't want that to happen. So, I decided to admit Mr. Louis to Japan. I remember setting up my hotel one, one night, about 2 a.m., looking out the window and seeing all the lights on in the engineering building. And I kind of said to myself, well, if anyone can do it, is uh, going to try. The coupe had very distinctive and sensuous body lines. Conventional stamping methods just can't produce those kinds of lines. But our production engineers and factories began developing sample dies. They tried and tried again until they were able to produce this sexy car. I think that this is something other manufacturers can do and is unique to Toyota. A problem we faced with the rounded front end of this design was to secure enough space in the engine compartment. To make everything fit, we had to move the battery around and design special projector-type headlamps with an independent high beam. Then to allow for proper cooling, we designed a new fan system. The air cleaner itself meant that we had to raise the hood 50 millimeters. When I heard this, I thought, uh, that's it, there goes the car. Because you can't just change the surface, you have to change every surface. We stuck with it, and when we had finally made that adjustment, it looked like we had not changed at all. The usual automotive interior is a square space, like this. But the exterior of the sport coupe has a very unique, rounded style. So our interior design staff wanted to extend feeling into the interior. The interior needed to have a luxurious feel, yet the design needed to say high performance. The engine and transmission communicate the feel of performance and to the driver through the steering wheel and instrument panel. If I were to describe the interior of the LS400 as a refined, sophisticated suit, then I would have to say that the S400 interior is like a luxurious leather jacket. A sport coupe must have great style, but the mechanical components, which are an extension of the style, must provide great overall performance. I was to evaluate it amongst other cars in that class. The uh, Mercedes 300 CE, 535 BMW, the Legend Coupe. And so when we arrived at the test facility, I was pretty excited to see what they, what they had come up with. It was nothing of what I expected. I mean, it was, it was completely different. It was really a car that you wanted to, to own look at or just go up and touch or drive. I mean, it just had those direct lines to it. It was very comfortable, but it felt like the seat wrapped around you a little bit. You felt like, hey, this is a car that I'm feeling right sitting, and I want to drive it, and I want to drive it fast. Whether it was a hairpin corner or a, a high-speed S or just a fast corner, whether left or right, downhill, off camera, right or left, the car seemed to be very, very stable. On the high-speed track, it was the only car that I was able to go all the way around the track flat out, never lifting off anywhere. I could not do this in the Mercedes. I couldn't do it in the, in the BMW. This is uh, as luxurious, if not more so, than both of those cars, but the performance uh, at shines are quite substantial. Something that I find very exciting is that TMC and production engineering never killed the original idea from Calti. Even though this was the most difficult to produce, it is the least compromised design we've ever executed.